this is going to be a little different. Mm -hmm. um, so the context of, of, of this presentation is actually middle and later Stone Age South Africa with hunter-gatherer populations where architecture doesn't really exist, um, except for the sense that people live in caves sometimes. Um, so rather than identify existing features, we just have a base sort of landscape archaeology assumption that this whole landscape is being used um, and being used to differential degrees. And we're trying to figure out how that works, where people would be, uh, how populations can, can live on that landscape. Um, and so our approach has been a very kind of bottom up, uh, rather than having data regarding architecture and things and, and trying to figure out what that means on a landscape scale. We're, we're taking human behavior from the bottom up and trying to figure out where people were. Because um, we don't have much record of, of where people were. So uh, our idea is to take an agent-based modeling approach um, with principles of human behavioral ecology and optimal foraging theory um, to model human foraging behavior and then sort of aggregate that up into an archaeological record. Um, ideally, uh, this will allow us to kind of bridge these temporal and spatial scales from what we understand that people do on a day-to-day -day basis um, and then, you know, the 100,000 years or so of archaeological record, I'm really kind of struck by the other talks and their very tiny time windows. Um, yes, so anyway, uh, age-based modeling should be a, a good tool for kind of bridging these uh, temporal scales. So here's my agent-based modeling uh, video. The agents run around, they forage for food, etc., etc. They harvest shellfish on the coast and collect plants and they hunt mammals and all of this uh, sort of resource scape is actually built on a huge amount of um, empirical data from my uh, assembled from a wide variety of colleagues. Look at them go. Um, okay, so what, what does this actually produce? What do we actually um, look at? Well, uh, probably the most sort of relevant thing for this particular session is that we actually simulate an archaeological record from the record of human behavior. Um, this is just simply the frequency of occupation of, of where agents have spent the most time. Um, all those little agents running around on, on sort of sub-hourly timescales. Um, we know, for example, that in the, in the sites along the coastal strip, that there's a lot of shellfish consumed. But you may notice there's not much sort of red flaring uh, evidence of those occupation along the coastal strip. So I talked more about this in my, in my uh, talk this morning. Um, but there, there's some... A little bit of mismatch between what we expect and what we're actually finding, um, but we at least get a better sense of how people are using the landscape as a whole um, using this approach. Um, so, uh, in terms of expanding this more broadly to other areas and regions and time periods, um, at least for a hunter-gatherer uh, context, um, the model that we are developing is, is available for everybody. It's online, you can download it, you can modify it, um, provide it a little bit of expertise in coding. Um, so hashtag open code, you know, making everything available. Um, and it is based on, on fairly simple uh, sort of bottom-up processes, which means it should be applicable to any place in the world where you have hunter-gatherer um, uh, uh, society. Um, yeah, easily adapted to other temporal and spatial scales. Um, you know, in, in quotes. But it, right now, the, it works on a kind of sub-hourly scale, but it, it would be very easy to adapt this and the sort of logic of this to, uh, you know, 100-year time slices or, or uh, you know, much coarser spatial scales or even much finer spatial scales. Um, however, all of this has required a, a just absolutely massive data gathering um, effort, um, actually going out and experimenting in, in the Know, how many calories an hour can you get from all these different South African habitats? So there's been a lot sort of building up that resource scape has taken a, a huge amount of work. Um, and finally, to cast this backwards into the past, we also have been using climate and vegetation simulations. Um, those are sometimes available and more often not. Um, so actually employing this uh, is, is, I suppose, easier said than done. Thank you.